For today's tutorial, what we're going to be having a look at is uh, the process of finding a derivative or differentiation. It's all part of calculus and it's a particularly important part of, of, uh, of mathematics generally. So our first step is to define what we actually mean by what is a derivative. Now, I want to look at this in, uh, to find two specific um, interpretations of what a derivative is and then we'll have a look as, uh, and see exactly why it is so fundamental and so important to the rest of mathematics. Now we have been using it quite a lot but implicitly in an awful lot of the things we've done so far. However, we haven't talked about it in an explicit way. What I'm going to spend a lot of time on um, is going to be having a look at what the geometric interpretation of a derivative is. So let's have a think first off of the various uh, things and functions and form of a graph. So if we have a graph, and it really doesn't matter what sort of graph it is, we have a graph um, that's with that sort of shape there um, at a particular point there, P. The derivative, or rather the, what we, the derivative is, is what we're looking at is finding the tangent of, uh, of at, at any particular point on this graph. So I can by eye draw a tangent through that point without too much trouble at all. Now the derivative is the gradient of that particular uh, that little tangent line to that function. So let's make this a little bit more definitive. Let's give uh, our point P some, uh, some names. We'll give it the point P, we'll define as being point x0, y0 using normal Cartesian coordinates and uh, if that's x0 then that will be, it's not right y, but that will be x0 down there and y0 at this point here. So it was fairly easy for me to draw a gradient um, or a tangent to that point by eye. What we need though is to find a more mechanical method of drawing a gradient. So what we need is a way of actually saying what, so we can do it with any function at any particular point on the graph and, uh, and come up with a def definition for, um, for the, the derivative and the tangent rather um, from that point. So if we take any function, let's give this, uh, this function um, a name. Let's call it a, a function of call it f of x. It seems a particularly sensible way to uh, go forward from there. Rather than draw a tangent first off, because of course that is fairly difficult to do, is what I could do instead is draw what's called a secant. I can't draw a tangent, or it's not particularly easy to draw a tangent, but what I can do is draw a secant line there's two points there, P and Q, and the secant line is simply the line that joins those two points. Now, from the, from the work that we've done already on various, uh, various functions and things, is we know that the gradient of the line drawing those two points can be found fairly, fairly easily. Now, let's have a look at this and let's think about exactly what we're going to do. If this is the point x0, if the point q is a little bit further over to the right, that must be, if that distance in there is delta x, then the x on the x-axis, that point will be x0 plus delta x. No rocket science there. Similarly, the change in the y-coordinate, delta y, will be, if the, if the, let's try that again, uh, y0, will be given is simply the function f of x. So at point q, which is the x value would be x0 plus delta x, the y value, uh, the y value at this point q, um, let's call it, um, it will be f of x0 plus delta x. And the y0, as we've already discovered, is going to be f of x zero. Now I'm sure we all remember that the definition of the gradient between any two points is given by the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values. 
Let's use the conventional symbol M. M is going to be equal to the change in the Y values divided by the change in the X values. Okay, now we have our definition of a gradient as M is equal to the change in the Y coordinates divided by the change in the X coordinates. We can rephrase that in terms of the, uh, the names that we have here, in terms of our function. So delta Y is simply going to be the, uh, the value of Y at point Q, which is going to be F of X0 plus delta X minus whatever it was at point P. So let's try that. And we end up with f of x plus delta x minus f, that should be x0 using the names I'm using here, f of x0. All over whatever the change in the x coordinates is. Now that's going to be x0 plus delta x minus x0. So very simply, it's just going to be this bit in here, which is delta x. So our gradient at the point, uh, or between the points P to Q, is going to be given by that particular expression here. Now, as we make Q closer and closer to P, we're going to move our secant line more and more to become um, the tangent line at the point P. And in fact, when um, delta X becomes vanishingly small, delta Y also becomes vanishingly small, and we end up with the definition of the gradient at the point P. That is the derivative, and technically that's written in the terms of uh, delta Y divided by delta X uh, is equal to, our derivative is equal to the limit as delta X tends to zero of the function F of x0 plus delta x minus f of x0 all over delta x. Now that is our definition of a derivative. Now that we have a definition for the gradient at any particular point, our delta y over delta x, that is defined, as I've already said, as the derivative of the function f of x at a particular point p. Now, we give this a special symbol. Now, it's the, given a special symbol in a number of different ways, as is always with mathematics. It's quite often um, given the symbol dy by dx. Now, that is a symbol in its own right. It is not to be, ever to be interpreted, and I think it says in the Maths for Science book, it's never to be interpreted as the d's could cancel to end up with y over x. That's not right. It is a symbol in its own right, and the symbol is dy over dx as a definition for the derivative at a particular point of a function. So dy over dx is one particular way of describing it. Another way is to use the dash notation f dash of x as the first derivative of a function at a particular point. Okay, so far so good. Let's now have a think about how we can use this in practice to determine the derivative of any particular function at any particular point. We'll use the general point. So I'm going to lose this graph here and instead what we'll have is a graph of a particular function. The graph of y is equal to 1 over x. Now we probably remember the graph of y over 1 over x looks something like that. Now, if we were to find the gradient at a particular point, then that's fairly straightforward. Let's pick a point, and let's use the same uh, naming convention that we've used before. We'll call that x0. So this will be um, the function at x0, which is going to be 1 over x0 at this particular point. Let's have a think about what we get if we try and put delta x equal to 0 straight away. If we look at our function over on the right hand side here, the definition of the gradient at our point, wherever it happens to be, we've got y 
or rather f of x0 plus delta x, if delta x is equal to 0, then x0 is going to be 1 over x, minus 1 over x, which is just going to take us back to 0. And if 0 is a value for delta x, we end up with 0 over 0, which really doesn't make any sense at all. Instead, what we need to do is a little bit of substitution and a bit of cancelling first. Right then, let's now try and put some, uh, some letters into this particular equation and see if we can determine what the gradient is at our, at our point, our desired point. So let's lose that bit for the moment because we don't need that. So our delta y over delta x, if we have a look at what delta y is going to be in terms of our function y is equal to 1 over x, at any point we're going to have delta y over delta x is going to be equal to f of x0 plus delta x, well that's going to be 1 of x0 plus delta x minus 1 over x, 0, all divided by delta x, whatever delta x might be. That's messy. It looks a little messy, but it can be manipulated in a number of different ways. So first off, let's take out this common factor or this factor of delta x and rewrite this as the uh, as a difference of two fractions. Now, if we cross multiply both sides, we end up with x0 minus x0 plus delta x all over x0 times x0 plus delta x. So don't forget to close the bracket there, which will simplify quite nicely. x0 minus x0 minus delta x just gives me, sorry that is equal, is going to give me minus uh, delta, sorry, 1 over delta x multiplied by minus delta x all over x0 times x0 plus delta x. That delta x will cancel with that delta x. Let's just write it up here. I will then end up with delta y divided by delta x is going to be equal to minus 1 over x0 plus x0 plus delta x. It's not plus at all, that's a multiplied by. And in the limit, when delta x tends to 0, what we'll end up with is working out the gradient, so dy by dx at a particular point is equal to minus 1 over x0 squared, which is exactly the result that we'd expect to get. So what we're finding from this is that the gradient at any particular point can be found with a little bit of manipulation of the